Hello, my name is Dana Curran and I'm presenting Hawk Reading 6, To Sleep, No Doubt to Dream. This reading discusses two articles, one setting the foundation for the primary study on dream deprivation. Eugene Azarinsky theorized that the periods of active eye movements that he observed in infants might be associated with dreaming. Unfortunately, infants couldn't tell him that if they experienced any dreaming, so adults were the best subjects for his experiments. Electrodes placed around the eye muscles monitored subject eye movement as he or she slept. Some subjects were woken up during the active eye movement. Some subjects were woken up during periods of no active eye movement and some subjects were left to sleep for the whole seven hours. All subjects were asked if they recall dreaming after awakening. The results were that most subjects recalled dreaming or feeling the feeling of dreaming after active eye movement. And concurrently, most subjects didn't recall any dreaming during the periods of no active active eye movement. Thus concluding that active eye movement or rapid eye movement is connected to dreaming. The importance of Azarinsky's study is the discovery of rapid eye movement or REM and it was also the basis of many studies on sleep and dreaming using more sophisticated research methods and more advanced physiological recording devices. Azarinsky led the way for our next groundbreaking study on sleeping and dreaming from William DeMint. The purpose of his study is to find out if dreaming is in some way a necessary and vital part of our existence. Could a person function without normal dreaming? So he decided the best way to test this theory was to prevent dreaming by waking the subject up every time they entered REM sleep. Electrodes connected to the subject's eye muscles indicated when he was falling into REM sleep. There were four phases of his experiment. First, dement established a baseline for uh, allowing all subjects to sleep uninterrupted for several nights, allowing Dement to see the subject's normal amount of dreaming and sleep pattern. Number two, the period of sleep deprivation lasted from three to seven nights in a row. During this, these days, the subjects were asked not to sleep during any other times. Throughout the study, uh, Dement continu continually waking up the subject as he hit REM, making sure he was awake for several minutes before going back to sleep. Number three, uh, Dement also monitored the recovery phase after the nights of sleep de deprivation. Number four, after the recovery phase, uh, some subjects came back to a different, the last stage of the experiment, uh, experiment, allowing them to sleep during REM, but awakening them after REM was over throughout the night. His results, uh, Dement, uh, Dement discovered that as the study progressed, the subjects had to be woken up more and more in order to deprive REM sleep. The subject had to be woken twice as many times at the end of the study than at the, uh, on the first night of the study. Another discovery was that compared to the baseline results, Dreaming increased by an average of 
after the days of dream deprivation during the recovery period. And the last part of the experiment was to prove that the increase of dreaming in the recovery period was not due to the fact that they were being woken up so many times, but what really mattered was that the subjects were woken up before REM sleep. The conclusion of his findings is that everybody dreams and that we need to dream. The results showed him that there's a measurable pressure that builds up with dream deprivation. One of the effects of dream deprivation is called REM rebound effect, which shows recovery phase that the mind seems to make up for the loss for the quantity of lost dreaming. The importance of this study Dement's preliminary research and conclusions in sleep and dream deprivation have stood the test of time. However, Dement seemed to stumble on onto something that might have been more important than he initially thought. One of the eight subjects in his experiment had attended a party and consumed mass quantities of cocktails the night before his baseline reading. The uh, conclusion was alcohol deprives REM sleep. This accidental finding has led other studies in the relationship between alcoholism and dream deprivation. Alcoholics who are deprived of REM sleep for, for years experience the REM rebound effect much more powerful than ever. This is a phenomenon known as delirium tremens. Alcoholics who stop drinking have terrible and frightening hallucinations. Dement's study also led to, another, to other studies of sleep and dreams, uh, such as uh, what happens during non-REM sleep. And uh, one scientist concluded that we do dream during non-REM uh, sleep uh, to some degree. Uh, another study uh, questioning the daytime and nighttime sleeping patterns, which concluded that we have a biological predisposition towards nighttime sleep. Overall, uh, DeMint's 1960 basic research has led many other studies due to the increased amount of new perspectives and technology in the field since 1960. It continues to stand the test of time.